I'm Mike Houston. I work for NVIDIA and I lead the deep learning team at NVIDIA. So we're showing multiple demos here for autonomous driving. The one we're showing here is we're fusing camera and LiDAR together to do pedestrian detection in difficult scenes. So for example, we're able to, to still maintain detection under heavy rain conditions. As you can see, there's a water droplet now sitting on the front of the camera. And we're still able to reliably detect because we're fusing multiple sensors together. So what we're showing here is what are the capabilities of NV DriveNet. So that's the neural network we've trained to do object detection and uh, segmentation of the scene. Object detection allows us to draw a box around the car and gauge its distance. So there's a couple of different data sets we're showing. So one is the Kitty data set. It's the one that's identifying cars here and drawing yellow boxes around them. That's a public data set and we've submitted our results. We're at 88% accuracy. The highest result is 90% accuracy. The highest result takes three seconds per frame and we're able to calculate at 50 frames per second. So we're the fastest real-time solution in that accuracy level. We can also do multi-class detection. So there's a new data set supplied by Daimler called the Cityscape data set. That allows us to train for multi-class detection. So using the same network and running at the same performance, no matter how many classes, we're able to identify, in this case, five different classes. Pedestrians, street signs, traffic signs, cars. Uh, and we can all do this in real time on a Titan X. We're actually running at 50 frames per second on a Titan X. Our latency from frame in to output out is 25 milliseconds. We then can combine this with more sensors to do a full 3D reconstruction of the world. So here we're showing the capabilities of PX2. So we're taking in six cameras and four LiDARs simultaneously. We're using that to do a full reconstruction of the 3D world. So here's the output of the four LiDARs that we're running. In this case, these are Quantergy LiDARs. Uh, these are mechanical LiDARs. And they each LiDAR is providing eight beams. We calibrated them to give us about a total distance of 30 meters to give us a tight reconstruction of the scene. We combine that with the neural network to enable us to do detection of all the objects around it, so thus fusing the LiDAR and the optical capabilities together to figure out all the objects happening in the scene. So once we do that, we get all the positions of the objects and all the relative speeds, including closure distances, to us. Now, using the cameras as well, we use structure for motion to calculate what's called the ego motion of the car, how we're moving through the scene. Once we have the ego motion of the car, that allows us to reproject the LiDAR as we move through space. But more importantly, now it also allows us to path plan. So you can, as you can see here, we're following the green line, and the two yellow lines are showing the potential lane change paths. As cars begin to close around us, it will change those paths over time and cut off how far we can drive forward or whether or not we can execute the lane change. So for example, if you'll see this car begin to slowly pass us, our ability to uh, change that lane begins to get modified until we can't safely execute it with the vehicle dynamics uh, that we have in the system. So everything together, all integrated, allows us to do a real-time reconstruction like this. It also allows us to uh, very tightly localize ourselves. We're using an HD map from here. So once we can find our place in the world, then we can, map, then we can very accurately put ourselves on the map. So we have about 20 centimeter accuracy uh, in the world with all this fused together. Think about path planning. This would, the next stage would be for us to take actuator control of the vehicle. So this is basic path planning. The next thing we can do once we have a high resolution map and everything in the scene is we can actually do much more advanced trajectory planning. So in partnership with FKA, they use a machine learning system once we have a 3D reconstruction of the world to do uh, very advanced trajectory maneuvers. So this includes being able to pass cars around corners at high speed. So if you notice, this has been currently configured in the most aggressive speed. So just like a race car driver, it's actually cutting through the apex of each turn and it is quite aggressively changing lanes around cars. So you can make it a little less crazy and instead of the no mercy passing rule, you can slow it down to much more normal driving configuration. So now it will stay in its lane, but when it gets near a car, it will execute, execute a passing maneuver. So still quite aggressive. More likely in the real world, what will happen is you won't have an overtake by default. You'll have it close it on a car, and then the user will initiate an overtake. So this stage, we are going to catch up to the red car there, and then we will keep and hold our distance. We'll slow down and adjust, just like you're expecting adaptive cruise control, then I can issue an overtake maneuver and it's smoothly calculate an overtake. And again, it's calculating the trajectory even for the for the next car going around the curve. So it does this based on its map of the world and then the high resolution map of the scene. So this is obviously quite aggressive because this is set up as a race course. 
but you can kind of get the idea of where we can go. So we take all this together, and then we can also allow that to go into the infotainment system so the user can understand what's going on. So we, we integrate all this together. So compared to what the computer sees, which is a very complex point cloud with lots of things moving on, it's too complex to show to the driver. So what we do is we compress that down into a visual representation you're driving on the road. So what you see all the way at the top is what the, is being seen through the windshield. In real time, the system's computing from all of our sensors and fusing it together. If you notice, we're synchronized with the video. So you see the car show up around the car and even passing and changing lanes in front of the car. So it's tight enough that you can actually see cars that you wouldn't normally see in your rear view mirror, but as they gear up, they're able to pass and you can see them. So including lane changes, so there's a very close pass, so what's in your blind spot, you can see this uh, white car begin to pass us now. So we think this is a solid proof of concept for how to present the information to the user in a nice, in a nice way so they can gain confidence of how an autonomous system works. If you don't think the car can see, it's very hard to trust the car. So some of the autonomous cars are currently on the road, they give very little feedback to the driver about what it can or can't see. So that rounds out our full concept that we're showing this year for autonomous pilot. This our Drive PX2 platform. So it represents uh, 24 teraops of processing for deep learning and computer vision. So it combines two of our next generation Tegra cores, which are on the other side, with two of our upcoming Pascal GPUs. So this offers more than an order of magnitude increase in performance from last year's platform. And again, all the sensor fusion that I, that I showed you, we believe that you need platforms of this capability in order to accelerate our ability to get autonomous vehicles on the road. So this is a very high uh, performance platform, and it's actually designed to be water-cooled to fit into the, into the car. So it's a 250 watt uh, at max power, but as cars move to battery packs and battery power, they already have internal cooling systems. This is designed to trivially integrate with those cooling systems. We put out way less power than it takes already to cool the batteries, so this is a very easy fit into the systems that people are beginning to build today.